So you may have seen the live stream already, but earlier in the day we ended up debuting 15 minutes of War Operation Intercept gameplay that is a part of DLC 1 for Call of Duty World War 2. Now, the DLC goes live on Tuesday, so this is early gameplay, and I was fortunate enough to be invited out by Activision Ed Sledgehammer to a capture event to capture DLC 1 footage earlier in the week out in Los Angeles, California. So, firstly, before I jump into things, huge thank you to them for the hospitality and for providing the travel and all that, getting out there, and the capture event itself. And a huge thank you to all you guys for the continued support day in and day out on all the videos that make this sort of thing possible. It's honestly a dream come true and I can't thank you guys enough and I'm forever grateful, but truly thank you guys for the support. But jumping into the content, today we want to talk to you guys about because the first thing we can showcase to you guys is Operation Intercept, the brand new war mode. I want to talk a little bit about it. We streamed, like I said earlier, some raw footage of it, just talking about it, some Q&A, all that good stuff. And we're going to be doing the rest of the maps in that format as well. So stick it right here on the channel if you guys are interested in any of that over the next couple of days. But we're going to be talking about six things that I think you guys absolutely need to know, some things that are some minor tips and tricks here and there that are awesome and can definitely help you out. Some things that are just general housekeeping notes and just other things involved within the map. So I think you guys will enjoy this DLC. I'm really enjoying this map in particular. I'm going to be excited to jump in and play it on my own console and my own account here shortly. But I want to give you guys these six things to be conscious of going into the DLC this coming Tuesday. So first things first, let's start out right off the bat talking about the different objectives within this map in particular. Now we've seen a couple of different maps. Once again, we have three, Operation Breakout, Operation Neptune, and Operation Griffin within World War II already, but we have a three objective layout for this map in which is rescue, destroy, and escort. The first wave of this is rescuing six prisoners, two on each side of the map, locked away in sort of back room closets or bunkers if you want to put it that way, and you have to end up going in and untying and freeing these prisoners and it's as simple as going in and holding down your square or on Xbox one in 30 days the X button for what seems about three to five seconds and then it unties them and those NPCs are free it's not anything where you have to escort them back either they are just good to go whenever so all you have to do is once again go over there break into this little bunker then untie them and you'll be good to go now this is something that probably takes in the grand scheme of things about 15 seconds to break in and free a prisoner and then from there maybe five additional seconds per each prisoner, but you will have the pressure of the defending team coming at you, but this one probably is one of the easier ones to complete, simply because they have that spawn delay if you end up killing an enemy, and they spawn back, so they don't have as much of a foothold as they would, say, on the final defensive push at the very end of the map. The second objective is to destroy the comms equipment, and very similar to what we see in Neptune, you do have comms equipment to destroy, but this time around, you end up having 25 pieces of comms equipment to destroy rather than what we have in Operation Neptune tune of 10 that is something that is a much bigger, once again, improvement in terms of quantity, but it is something that you don't really notice as much because it is a very close quarter situation. A lot of the stuff you can end up shooting from the outside. You can end up taking out a lot in a very little amount of ammunition as well because there are smaller specific radios and also the standard columnar and larger pieces of the rack radio equipment in which that is something we know from Neptune. Those take a little bit more damage, but the things that are just lying on desks, those don't take all that much time to destroy at all. You can take those out probably half a magazine of whatever weapon and it's probably about one pistol magazine as well so those don't take all that much but it is something you have to focus on finding a lot more of them you might have a tough time briefly with the final two pieces they're in the back room because that is where the enemy spawns up immediately but my best guess and best tip for this would be just to throw some grenades back that way and it'll take care of that without having to really step into that area the final piece though is to escort a tank once again as very similar to operation breakout but this one is very claustrophobic in nature compared to that of what we have within Breakout. The corridors in which you have to navigate are much tighter and a lot closer quarters and therefore mean a lot more death than that of what you might be used to with Breakout. Now, as for the mechanics, it's almost identical to what, once again, we see in Breakout, but you just gotta be more conscious of your surroundings simply because there is a lot of different debris that might disguise some players. There are players that could jump around corners at any second. There are some different cutoff pathways that could really spell disaster for your team and all in all, it's something that is a little bit more hectic, I feel. But this one is fantastic and a great one to play, especially if you love that high-paced action and something that always keeps you in the thick of it. So that's the three objectives here for this one. The next thing I want to talk about is the play styles because this map is actually fantastic. I think that it caters to every single style of play that there is to offer. That being SMGs, rifles, shotguns, LMGs, snipers even, though probably the least bit here with this, but you'll see in the gameplay that Noah J456 
6 is going off in this gameplay. He even got me quite a few times with some nasty little scopes, but that said, if you give it a shot, you can end up making it work, but overall, the map itself is very much so suited for close quarters engagements, long range engagements, all that good stuff. You're going to be able to thrive with whatever you want to use here. So if you're going for challenges, if you're going for just high kills, I think you can do all of that. The third thing I want to talk about is sort of gameplay mechanic or gameplay feature that isn't really seen all that much, or at least not to the extent that it's seen in Operation Intercept within the other war maps. That being elevation, because there's various points in times where you'll see in this gameplay, I'm either a way higher level than somebody else, or somebody may have the higher level compared to me. There's a lot of different over looks that of course do offer those standard windows overlooking different areas of the map but you also have these standard places that are just naturally higher like there is one port in time where in the first wave of the game there's a staircase that overlooks an outside corridor that leads up to further down the map and of course you can end up seeing inside the building you're in at that point in time and then in the comms equipment the second story is incredibly dangerous if you have the higher advantage so there's a lot more elevation compared to other places within this whereas not it's just say slight hills with a turret on it this can actually offer some prime position and be one of those places that really is the higher ground that is a sort of king of the hill thing so be conscious of that if you're going to be on the defensive end this helps out tremendously more so on the offensive end you have to kind of push into it but you can somewhat take advantage of this also if you are on the offense in some aspects but overall just be conscious of it because there is a little bit more elevation that could spell disaster once again a little bit more so than other maps number four deals a little bit with once again going back to the rescue aspect of the actual objective that we talked about just a little bit ago but I want to talk about it in a different sense because the prisoners themselves offer a very cool and interesting way in which we can maybe see the war mode progress throughout the rest of the DLC within World War II previously we only had the standard comms equipment take the bunkers push the hill all sorts of things like that and it was just just very objective oriented to the point where it was straightforward and didn't really offer anything outside of what we already knew. And I guess that makes sense because that's the launch stuff, that's what we had given to us for a couple of months. But now adding in a more personal feel to this and elevating what seems to be those air quote stakes, it's interesting to see how this will in turn change what else we can see going forward because we end up seeing a sort of maybe catalyst from exo zombies in which we had to escort civilians in a little bit of a challenge in game there. Maybe that's the catalyst for this, but I'm intrigued because we're seeing a more change up and intro into a different objective than what we're casually used to. And I think going forward, that offers a little bit more of a refreshing thought that we're not going to be locked into just a certain set of objectives moving forward. So while itself really is just standard in this game mode, I'm bringing it up because I'm interested in seeing where this can lead and what it means for the future. I'm more so excited than anything else out of this. But the next thing are two little tips that I want you guys to be conscious of because they can actually help out your team greatly in this map in particular. So the first of which being a tip that comes back once again to another sort of the objective, that being the part in which you have to destroy the comms equipment. Now, if you're on the defensive side of this and you have to end up saving the comms equipment from being destroyed, one thing that is very different compared to what we had in Operation Neptune is the fact that you can actually repair the comms equipment. You can end up going over to it, holding down Square on PlayStation 4, X on Xbox One when it comes out in the 30 days after the launch of PlayStation 4, and whatever it may be, maybe F as a default on PC, but regardless, you'll be able to go over to it and hold for probably about two to three seconds, and it will repair the equipment up to full health. Now, of course, you won't be able to repair it after it's all completely destroyed if it goes down to zero health and it brings that total number of comms equipment down that's not something where you can repair it back up and keep building those back up but if it takes a little bit of damage like we said this isn't an instantaneous thing you can end up repairing this which is nice now it's definitely useful for the bigger pieces but also very useful for the smaller ones because those go by very quickly so you want to make sure that you can capitalize on these and take advantage of that so definitely keep that in mind going into the defensive end on this map now the final thing that I want to talk about is the cutoff lanes in which on the final push of the objectives, that being where you have to escort the tank, there's a lot of different angles in which players can flank and everything, but one big important one is actually one that overlooks not necessarily the spawn of where the attacking players are, but just outside of that spawn. There's a train car in which in the gameplay you might notice that it flashes a sort of wiping white glare on it. If you go over to it, once again, it's interactable, very similar to how doors were in Ghosts, and you can close that off and effectively cut off a certain portion of the map. Now, of course, a player can go up to it and open it up, but it allows you to know when somebody is 
is there and also cut off the flow of the map in that aspect, something that is very much so crucial if you can end up trying to make that first initial push in advance through the map because like I said this one is very tough to get onto because it is so claustrophobic because there are so many grenades because there are so many cutoff lines of sight it's very important so keep that in mind also a very big portion here but that's gonna do it for six things here out of this Operation Intercept map showcase that I wanted to show you guys and let you know about. So that said, keep this in mind. DLC 1 goes live on Tuesday, but I hope you guys enjoyed the first look in both in the stream earlier in the day, but also in this one as well. I wanna let you guys know my thoughts on it and everything. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. And of course, feel free to share your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. If you guys are liking the look of this map, if you guys maybe aren't necessarily too interested in it, but you might pick it up or whatever it may be, let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you drop a like down below if you guys did, and if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Call of Duty World War 2. DLC 1 content, we're gonna be hammering it in the next couple of days. We got early content for everything out of this DLC 1 map pack, so stick it right here so you don't miss a single bit of it. And finally, if you guys wanna follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected outside of YouTube. We practically live on Twitter, so if you guys wanna strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that said, now to the way, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. Mine is an espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.